Ehi hey, la ciurma, io sono Mazzetes e ben ritrovati qui su Expeditions Room. Sto registrando tutto di fila, quindi sono ancora un po' emotivamente provato per quello che è successo nello scorso episodio. E... Niente, vediamo un attimo come va a svilupparsi il finale del gioco. Olivia ci aveva appena detto appunto che se ne va a casa per stiamo meglio. Ehm... E l'apparenza può essere destabilizzante, mi sento comunque morto dentro. Such things are natural. You've been tested physically and mentally. Furthermore, you've triumphed over your opponent. Sì, abbiamo vinto sul nostro nemico. Finalmente Vitellio Lurco affronterà la giustizia. E i tuoi amici non hanno lasciato le loro vite in vano. Deianera non aveva ragione di dare la sua vita per Roma. Non l'ha fatto. Ha dato la sua vita per noi. Lurco sarà sicuramente exiled o anche executed. The Senate doesn't have a high opinion of traitors. Obviously, you will have to testify. La mia coscienza è pulita. I know. You paid a heavy price to keep it that way. Hai pagato un pegno molto un prezzo molto importante per mantenerla così, infatti. If you will forgive me for bringing this up, I believe this will be good for your political career. Se posso tirare fuori questa questione, questo sarà molto buono per la tua carriera politica. Pensi che potrei essere un senatore? Why not? You are the right age to begin the cursus honorum. All senators have to start somewhere. As far as the Senate is concerned, you are a tragic hero who brought a corrupt consul to justice. <laughs> Un eroe tragico che ha portato alla giustizia a un console corrotto. Regardless of what happens to Lyoko, Rome will need a new console. And I can't think of a better candidate. Ah, non pensa, non può pensare a un candidato migliore di noi. Carto is right. Both the optimates and the populares already support you. If you run for senate, the election will result in a landslide. <laughs> ok. I popolari che gli ottimati sono dal nostro lato. La prima sarebbe più semplice, effettivamente. E ritirarsi a vita privata e... e boh. Ma... Dopo tutto questo impegno penso che dovremmo assumerci la responsabilità più a lungo. È deciso, allora, con il vostro aiuto uh, cercherò di essere eletto quest'ora e un giorno console. Cercherò di essere un buon servitore del popolo di Roma e assicurarmi che tutti si ricordino quelli che hanno dato le loro vite per questo. I have no eh, la vittoria è comunque con un gusto aspro. Eh... Vi chiedo se, avessi, se avrei potuto salvare i miei amici. You did save them. Those who remain alive have you to thank for it. Li hai salvati. Quelli che sono ancora in vita devono ringraziarti. This chapter ends and another chapter begins. Fortuna alone knows what the future holds. Questo capitolo finisce e un altro inizia. Solo il fatto può sapere che cosa ci riserva al futuro. So ends the abridged history of one of the most beloved consuls of the Republic of Rome. It is thanks to him and his efforts to thwart the corruption and ambition of Vitellius Lurco that Rome remains a proud republic to this day. With his allies in the Senate, he worked tirelessly to address the problems that had plagued the Republic since its birth. Though many among the people of Rome lamented what they saw as a lost opportunity to challenge the status quo, The strengthening of democracy greatly improved life throughout the provinces of Rome. 
In time, the savior of the Republic took his well-deserved place in history among such heroes as Kinkinatus or Scipio Africanus. Cineros. Once he had been an athlete, a wrestler, and a troublemaker. But in our story, he was a servus, a protector, and a mentor. He had died diligently performing the task to which he had devoted himself, protecting his ward. Cineros was given a tomb in Rome's finest cemetery, next to his old Dominus, whose death had incited this story. Though his death had been unexpected, he met his end with dignity and resolve. He had received forgiveness and, after a fashion, vindication for the mistakes of his youth. He was missed by all those who knew him. Mm. Caeso finally seemed to have had his fill of military campaigns. Together with Lucia and their daughter, he settled down in Rome. Though their relationship was distant at first, the shared love they felt for their daughter soon brought them close. And eventually, they had many more children together. To his surprise, Caeso took well to the quiet life and to fatherhood. He remained very close with his old friends, with whom he often met to drink and eat and share stories of their old lives as the heroes of the Republic. Kalida's second marriage turned out considerably better than her first. With her beloved husband committed to letting her live her best life, she was happy to settle down by his side, supporting him in his endeavors as he supported her. Kalida was happy to find that it was possible to be a wife and a mother without giving up the things she loved. She taught their children archery and horseback riding, and nobody ever again looked down on her for her unwomanly pursuits. Bestia stayed in Rome and remained close friends with his old companions going out of his way to stay in touch with them all, no matter the distance that separated them. He returned to the arena, but no longer as a gladiator. His new vocation was to teach Pancratian, inspired by the story of his old Magister Cineros. Though it brought him little wealth, there was no doubt it made him happy. As soon as things had quieted down, Bestia traveled to Africa once more to look for his sister. He did find her and bring her home, and she lived happily there for the rest of her life. Deanira had given her life for her friends with no hesitation and no fear in her eyes. The Amazon warrior knew that she had avenged her sister and forgiven herself for her misdeeds. She went to the Chinvat Bridge with her head held high, ready to be judged. Natalia Skyawala left Roman politics and moved to Upper Latium with his wife Liliana, where they raised their children together in peace. Cato remained an important figure in Roman politics, grudgingly respected even by those among the population who desired change. He remained a defender of the patrician class, a shield against the pandering and opportunism of more populist voices. He himself was elected consul twice throughout his life and his years in the position were generally favorably regarded. Cicero served one more year as consul before his retirement. In his old days, he lived a quiet life on a farm in Sicily, where he was greatly beloved by the people for his time as quaestor. He continued to write many books on politics and law. Hmm. He is dead and his sons lacking his ability to rule. Pontus was soon annexed by Rome. The region never again rose to prominence. With Zenobia in charge of Musia, it became once more a peaceful part of the Roman province of Asia Minor. With her focus on trade and strong ties to the neighboring family, the people enjoyed a period of great Zenobia. prosperity. Zenobia de Musia. the leadership of Damianos, the rebellion of his gladiators soon spiraled out of control. Ah, like the beginning of what became known as the Servile War. Escaped slaves terrorized the Roman citizens throughout Thracia until the wealthy senator Crassus brutally defeated them and crucified thousands. Ok, questo è quello che è successo. Cioè, sì, mira quello che è successo realmente. With the death of the pharaoh Ptolemy and Queen Cleopatra, the Ptolemaic dynasty had fallen. With Rome 
finally at peace and under strong leadership, Egypt simply became another province ruled by a succession of proconsuls who cared more about lining their own pockets and improving the lives of Egyptians. Uh. Over the years, several attempts were made to claw back self-governance for Egypt. But time and again, Rome struck down all dissent. With the death of Cleopatra and under the steady guidance of Lunya, Nazarmanes once more became a peaceful and prosperous part of Africa Proconsularis, firmly aligned with Rome. As Man. the eldest and most respected elder of the Berber tribes, Lunya became a singular figure of leadership and respect. Grazie Lunya che si è supportato. She was said to be more than a hundred years old when she died. After traveling all across Africa for many years, going wherever her instincts took her, ah, Raya. Raya eventually returned to Memphis and to the service of Tener at the Temple of Ubasti. When her mentor passed away, Raya naturally assumed the mantle as High Priestess of the Cat Goddess. Though the old faith was dwindling, she was greatly beloved by many, and her temple prospered, always home to many, many, many cats. <laughs> With Diwitiacus once more assuming rulership of the Eidwi, the tribe maintained a strong alliance with Rome, and through it, they greatly prospered. With the aid of the Eidwi, Gallia slowly unified under Roman rule, and civilization soon began to creep into those lands in the form of paved roads, aqueducts, and fortified Roman towns. In his old age, did the druid ever regret hastening the absorption and suppression of his own faith and culture? We will never know. The once proud and strong Arwerni were greatly reduced by the defeat of Wakinga Torix, but his survival gave them hope. His will to make war upon Rome had been crushed, but he remained a strong figure of leadership among his people, okay. even despite his failures. The tribes of Gallia remained unified and somewhat at peace, and vestiges of their culture and traditions survived their gradual subjugation under Rome. In this work, I have done my best to recount the history of this fascinating period, truthfully and accurately. As I have scoured the sources and spoken to many who claimed to have heard the story from someone who was there at the time, one thing that has stood out to me is the pivotal moments along the way where our story could have turned out very differently. In his darkest moods, the savior of Rome must have wondered if there was anything he could have done differently to save his friends. Perhaps if he had struck down Vitellius Lurco on that stage, or if he had gone so far as to bring his legion across the Rubicon, mm. none of his companions would have had to die. But for those of us left to live in a peaceful and strong republic, what transpired seems like the best possible outcome. Our republic was saved, and the villain, Vitellius Lurco, was brought to justice. One should always take care when second-guessing historical figures with the benefit of hindsight. Here in the present, there will never truly be a way for you to know how you might have acted if you had lived in the past. Nor can you ever be certain how history will remember you. E con questo si conclude. Episodio 137, serie più lunga mai registrata finora su questo canale. E chissà se qualcuno di voi è arrivato fino a questo episodio finale. Sono contento di averlo passato con voi dal day one, ci abbiamo messo molto tempo ad arrivare fino a oggi a concludere tutto. Che bello vedere il corassino rosso là. Non c'è dei nere in questa immagine. Ma c'è sì, nero. Io per dei nere entro dopo, forse quindi nel main menu non te lo fanno vedere. E, um... Alti e bassi su sto gioco. Secondo me avessero puntato sulla parte gioco di ruolo, che è quella che davvero ha dato di più, perché anche sulla parte finale i... 
tutti quegli spezzoni sui vari personaggi, su chi ha fatto cosa. Insomma, potevano esserci degli outcome davvero diversi, davvero molto molto diversi. Potevano essere tutti vivi, potevano essere tutti morti, poteva essere che Cicerone moriva, poteva essere che noi eravamo dittatori, eh, non c'era la Repubblica, tante cose. Ma eh, siamo finiti così, non farò credo una seconda run su questo, perché la parte in cui pecca davvero, davvero, davvero tanto questo gioco è la parte delle legioni, e questo non mi stancherò mai di dirlo, perché quello che aggiunge... Tantissima monotonia, ripetitività e anacquato è diventato lunghissimo per quello che effettivamente doveva essere. Se fosse stato come gli altri Expeditions sarebbe andato molto più sciolto. Eh, Conquistador e Viking avevano le loro parti un po' più lente in cui bisognava potenziare i personaggi, fare gli accampamenti, eh, dare da mangiare e via dicendo. Però le battaglie e quella parte di risico eh, delle legioni... Secondo me è stato proprio un grande errore, è stato proprio un grande errore perché partendo dalle recensioni che hanno avuto di viking hanno detto Eh ma come, ma risolvi tutta la battaglia solo facendo dei combattimenti 5 vs 5? Eh, sì. Sì. E questo non mi è piaciuto, spero che se in futuro faranno qualcos'altro, adesso non ne sentiremo parlare per un bel po' immagino perché comunque per sviluppare questo ci hanno messo molti molti anni. Per un po' non ci sarà Expeditions su questo canale, eh, ci saranno altre serie. Stavo pensando di fare una serie di qualcosina più rapido, poi magari tornare su uno strategico, accetto anche i vostri consigli, ma forse quando arriveranno sarà già, Anzi, sarà già iniziato il prossimo futuro. Spero che mi seguirete ancora. Spero che vi abbia fatto piacere il mio spendere tutto questo tempo per condividerlo con voi, editando i video, caricando e preparando le miniature, le descrizioni e tutto meticolosamente per questi 137 episodi. È stato un lavoro lungo di molti anni, di molti luoghi, di molti laghi. <ride> e Niente, grazie ancora e ci vediamo alla prossima. Ciao a tutti, come al solito, non mi piace. Un commento qua sotto e iscrivetevi se per caso non l'avete già fatto. Ciao a tutti e buona giornata.